Welcome to my podcast, The World Inside Out. My name is Paul Nadeau, and what I am endeavoring to do in this podcast is to bring forth social issues that affect us all, in a hope that we will collectively get together and make a difference, a love-based difference in this world. Today, my guest is Tashika Levan. She is a black activist, a member of the LGBT community, and also a blogger for the Huffington Post. Yeah. And our topic, of course, today is going to be talking about the deteriorating relationship between the police and the black community. And Tashika, you have been very emotional and very, um, uh, you've been very open about how you feel about this. And I really want to get your perspective on what's going on. How do you feel? Paul, you've known me for a bit now. and. Uh you know, my heart is, is really pure. Mm. I have love for every human being, from every race, and I respect every member of society, whether you're a doctor, a nurse, or a police officer. But as a black woman, in all honesty, it, I have looked at the police department in a very different way, and that has not been a recent feeling. Um, the way I look at police officers, it's not something that has come about just yesterday or even last year or even two years ago or even five years ago. It's been this way for a very long time. And yet still, even with my feelings of anger towards the treatment of black people from um, police officers, I still have managed to respect police officers because that's what we do as human beings. We respect each other despite our differences, despite how we feel about each other. But what has been happening, especially in 2016, has been overbearing. I'll be honest with you. I have never been this open. As much as I've been an activist for years, especially as a news anchor, I've had to report these stories from the time I started the media in 2003 and the narrative hasn't changed. You've been very passionate about this and you've written a lot and, and your emotion has come through. What's going on? Tell us, tell us your perspective of things and how this makes you feel. It's, it's not even enough to put into words, to be honest. And Paul, you know me. You know that I am I'm a lover of people. I live for diversity. I live for equality and I live for fairness and in recent times especially it's just I'm not seeing the world that I want to be a part of and that is because especially as a journalist and I'm, 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 I've been doing media work and research and having to report on such incidents since I became a journalist and, and that was in 2003 and to this day I cannot believe that I'm still writing and reading these stories and it's heartbreaking because even as a black person as angry as I get each time I see stories I see videos of black people being abused being brutalized by police officers I still find it hard to hate because that's not, that's not how human beings should be. We shouldn't, we shouldn't allow our anger to get us to the point where we become violent towards each other, or even with our differences, or whether we like this race, or this skin color, or this religion, or, or gender, whatever. It, it has never gotten me to a point where I disagree with the way you say things, I disagree with the way you do things, I disagree with your lifestyle, or your religion, whatever, but I, not to the point where I'm going to get to that angry point where I become physical 
or say nasty things. And that's what's been happening. What's been happening, especially in 2016, is that there's been a blatant disregard for black bodies. And it's heartbreaking to watch. Mm -hmm. It's heartbreaking to write about. And I've tried, especially with Philando Castile, who was shot in front of his child, because it's basically his child as well. Yes. And this, this man, he complied. He complied with everything those police officers asked of him. He, he even gave them more information than they needed to know. He told them that he had a firearm, he had a permit for it. He told them everything that a, a law-abiding citizen should, should say to an officer. And yet still, he, he's gone. That's right. That's and, his, and his daughter has been left with an image that will haunt her for the rest of her life. And when these things happen, and it results in this type of war, mm. that's not a good thing. And I, I'll tell you, and I, I'll be honest with you, because at the end of the day, as angry as I may be with how, how police treat um, the black community, I don't believe in, 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 in revenge in that way, in, in that type of vengeance. I understand that you're angry, I understand that we have a right to be angry. However, retaliation and, and, and violence towards police officer because of that anger, it's not justified. No. But I'll tell you, black people, they've been through a lot. Right. And that's the truth. The truth is, is that there, in my opinion, there is a systematic type of oppression that has been taking place since the days of slavery. And I know many people may become uncomfortable when I speak about things like this, but it is true. Slavery has not ended. Slavery has been, it has been prettied up. And why I say that, Paul, is because the evidence is there. The evidence, the countless videos where you see police officers arresting black men as opposed to arresting white men. And it is true. And if there's anyone who doubts what I'm saying, just, just stroll onto my page. Stroll onto my Facebook page. As a matter of fact, just Google police arresting white man, police arresting black man. And, and what we've seen over the years is this narrative that black people are hard to deal with that black people are aggressive and they resist arrest all the time and that is why we have to in turn become so aggressive with them and because we feel threatened by their aggression we shoot and it just so happens that you die mm. as a black person that's basically the picture that's being painted now my personal feelings is that when i see these videos how can i then listen to what you're telling me Mm. How can I then say, all right, black people, you need to do better, and police, you need to, you, um, well, not, not even that. It's basically from what the police is saying, then I would, would basically say, then black people, you're at fault. You need to, to, you need to stop being so aggressive. But I know myself. I'm a black person, too. Mm. And I'm not aggressive. I'm not what the media says I am. And the media... And I know I'm all over, but trust me, there's so much that's there's so much that's that's going on inside of inside of my heart that I, I really just wanna just wanna say this point more than anything else. The media has done an exceptional job at painting black people in the worst way possible. Just look at it. When a white person is arrested. You see a beautiful picture of that person back in, uh, in their work clothes, a business suit, or in, in their, their graduation gown, or something. It's always very nice. But when a black person gets arrested, or even if there's no arrest, look at the situation with the, with the, the parents, who, with, the, um, with the gorilla. Right. 
that father's past was brought up and his mugshot was used even when nothing even when he did nothing that was criminal like like why would you do that why would you bring up his past he's not being arrested for anything he's not being charged why would you use his mugshot but when it when it's when it's another person outside of the black community it's 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 pretty it's 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 nice and that's what we see in the media and what that does is to paint a picture that black people are the enemy that all black people are criminals that they are part of the inner city communities where they are like cannibals they kill each other and they kill anyone who comes into their path and that is wrong mm -hmm. the media needs to do better because Paul, there are some brilliant black men and women out there. Yes. Actually, most of us are ambitious, yes. kind-hearted people. We are not what the media says we are. And it is sad every time you turn on your TV and you see some conversation about the black community, it is in a negative way. So the media has created us as the enemy. And I believe in my heart, somewhere tells me in my heart, that this is why police officers treat us this way. And because I'm, I, 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 don't, I don't think so much with my emotions. As much as I'm emotional, I try to think logically. And I know what the media has been doing. Fox has been doing it for umpteen years, and they don't care. It's very blatant. But there are other news stations that have been jumping on board and they're doing the same thing. You even see it in movies. You see it in, in, in sitcoms. The way we are portrayed, we're always the ones doing something bad. And I tell people all the time, until the media stops doing that, until Hollywood stops casting people, in, black people in these, these roles that continue to reinforce those stereotypes, it will not change. And because of that, police officers look at a black man or a black woman and all they see is what they see on TV. So therefore, oh, this person is going to be aggressive. This person is going to be, is going to harm me. So I have to, as soon as I get into this situation, use my gun. I don't know if you share the same feelings, but those are just some of my thoughts with what I've been seeing. And sadly, that type of aggressiveness between police and the black community has, has found its way here.